Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show, brought to you by Datastax Academy, where we bring you the latest news and interview technical experts to help you succeed in building large-scale distributed systems. So, Holden, it's been a year. Yeah. We're back at Data Day, Texas. We are. We can't stay away from this place, can we? I mean, it is the only conference that I come to that consistently has Bud Light Lime at the speaker's party. Have you found anywhere else? Uh, no, and that's why I come too. Yeah. I, yeah. Also barbecue. And barbecue. Bud Light yeah. Lime and barbecue for the speakers. That is Austin in a kind of in a nutshell, right? Yeah. I, if anyone else knows of a conference with Bud Light Lime, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I'm always looking for more opportunities to drink Bud Light Lime. All right. Well, that being said, it's been a year. So what it, last time we talked about what was new with Spark. Yeah. Uh, a year is a long time in software. Well, like in software years, that's what... That's one year, I think, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's about the same. Yeah, yeah it's exactly uh, the same. Especially because it's open source, so it's really more like uh, about a quarter. Uh, yeah, it's like a, a quarter of a real year. Yeah, yeah, so open source. Let's have a lot of arguments, and then we'll do stuff. So, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, 2.4 coming up? So 2.4 already out. Very exciting. Okay, yeah. um, So many cool features. Uh, the Apache Arrow integration keeps getting better. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's You can now do Arrow-accelerated UDFs. Um, and what this means is that uh, Python VM and the Java VM are able to coordinate together so much better. Right. Um, and not just Python. I think the R integration, I don't remember for sure if the R integration went in 2.4, but I'm, I'm like 90% sure it did. I don't uh, remember seeing a lot of R anything anymore. Yeah, it's true. There's not a, been a lot of work um, in the core Spark stuff on R. A lot of it's been happening um, by the R Studio folks in another sort of project. And it's based on... The Spark R stuff, so it's a little bit confusing sort of where some of that code lives, but I'm pretty sure that you can use R with Arrow and Spark. Um, but if not, it will be very, very soon. Well, it, and it seems like Python is becoming more of a first-class citizen every day. Oh, yeah, very much so. I mean, I it's not just that I don't understand the R syntax. Um, I think Python is a great language, um, and there's been a lot of investment in, in Python specifically for Spark. Um, there's, there's multiple committers actively working on it. Um, I mean, the, the folks at IBM, uh, my old former employer, thank you for paying me money, um, have been doing some excellent work there too. Yeah, they got a lot of people working on it. They yeah. do. Um, Brian Cutler is is the probably the committer most focused on that, mm. and it, the work's been really good. Um, and the Apache Arrow project is also like a separate project, and just just as a thing, if it's if it's okay. Um, Apache Arrow has explicitly asked for more people to help with doing code reviews. Oh, okay. um, and we're also yeah. about to do the same thing in Spark because we're in this place where uh, we have like just too many changes coming in and we just can't keep up with them. Well, code integration, and this is, this is the hard part I think with open source software is yeah. when you have a lot of different parts and there are different people, maybe different teams all working on the same thing, yeah. and then it all goes into one repo. Now it has to work together and ship. Yeah, it does. And it's really hard, right? And, and the reviews are often really the challenging part, right? And yeah. we're, we're seeing this, like Brian's been doing great work reviewing a lot of those arrow uh, patches coming in. And, and that's really solid. But in some of the other areas, we could really use the help from other people. Uh, so if you have experience with Python, um, so specifically if you have experience with Python and Java, you are like a very small pool of people and we would love to help uh, <laughs> very get specialized. you involved in doing code reviews with Spark so that we can do some really awesome I, Is things. it really that hard? I mean, I think I, I know Python and Java. I mean, does that mean I'm do rare? Come join? No, I don't. But See, I, that's the problem. <laughs> See, I, got, I got work to do. Right, so the problem yeah. is that the, the group of people that know both Python and Java do seem to tend to be uh, what's called uh, employed. Uh, yeah, and that's the problem too. You know, is it unless there is your job doing code reviews yeah. can take a lot of time. It can, but and you do you do I live do. stream your code reviews. And I live really awesome. code reviews, and you can check them out on YouTube. It has they a are lot really of good. <laughs> yeah. um, it's youtubecom slash user slash Holden Caro. Um, but yeah, nothing personal. Every time you do them, right? No, it's all business. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> I try. I try really hard. Yeah, yeah. But like, I want to be clear, for other people who are like kind of intimidated by the idea of right. doing code reviews, it's like totally okay to just like do one file, right? You don't have to do the entire thing. You can just come and help out for the bit of time that you have. And like, if you could just, just for one, one hour thing. a week, <laughs> you too could help save me from a life of enterprise support contracts. 
I feel like this is a pledge drive. It is. It's like PBS Call now. or something. Yeah. Call now. Get your cred. <laughs> it does give you cred, though. It does, actually. And that's, that's really important. Um, and I, I mean, I love our code contributors. Without them, we wouldn't have the arrow integration to start with. Uh, well, when I see people in a Jira, especially in an ASS Jira, and they're, you know, they're contributing like, hey, I found this thing, yeah. or I think this knit, or something like that. I'm like, okay, you're involved. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. But the, the people who the people who I'll cherish and remember um, are the people who do reviews, right? Because like, here's here's the thing. It's like, it's a funnel, right? The number of people who are able to help at this level, yeah, it's just really small. And like, I feel overwhelmed. And this- Are you doing all the code reviews or something? I'm not, I'm not. But <laughs> there's, uh, there's like three people who are doing the code reviews for the Python integration. Got it, okay. And then, and they're lovely people. Um, is anything tagged as like low-hanging fruit? So this is the problem. Um, the, we do have. Is that then no? <laughs> no, no, no. Like there are things tagged as low-hanging fruit, but the things that are tagged as low-hanging fruit, like I can, I can review those really easily, right? Um, and I, so I don't really need the help with those. What I really want is I want other people to take a first pass on the things which are kind of gnarly. Right. And give like an initial like, yeah, this looks reasonable. This is my understanding summary. So that I can come in and be like, yeah, this is great. I'm going to spend like the six hours on this that I need to. Or, you know, this other person will take a look at it and be like, this is super gnarly. These are the things I think we should fix first. And I'll be like, yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to come back when those things are fixed and put in the six hours. And they just need to put in like an hour or two. It gives a little ownership too. It does. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've, okay, we've yeah, covered sorry. a lot of yeah, this. Yeah. Now I realize like, oh, wait a minute. We were talking about what's new. And in Spark, yeah. Actually, okay. but that is actually, I think, just lockstep with what's new. You want more new? Get on the code reviews. Let's do this, people. Yeah, like we have 500 open pull requests. We can move so much more fast. 500? Sorry, so much more quickly. I don't know. Yeah, 500, wow. give or take. There was a time when I was no 420, doing a but I didn't drive. screenshot it. Yeah. That um, <laughs> was rough. Um, all right, so what's, all right, so okay. we got yeah. Arrow, so Python, Arrow integration, R, Python's getting a lot better. Yeah, yeah. I've got all that. Um, but the, the real exciting thing is that Spark 3 is the next thing on our roadmap. And this means a uh, major version change it means that we don't even have to pretend we care about compatibility anymore. Um, Dot zero, mm, so good. Oh, mm, don't Just, run it in prod. So like, all the tech debt gets thrown away. There is right, no more tech debt, right. right? Because what happens is when you replace a SQL engine with a new one, you don't have any bugs anymore, right? Oh no, actually, actually all the old bugs magically feed forward. Oh, so what we no, did last time, it happens. <laughs> we, we, we wrote a new SQL engine and we just closed all the SQL bugs. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure we're going to do the same thing again. So it's, it'll be a real exciting time. So um, more testing. Yeah. So, I mean, we do need more tests. But like Spark 3 is, is really cool. We're going to get a chance to take out all kinds of mistakes that What's going to get dropped on a 3? Oh. OK. Because that's the time where we do these things. Yeah, it Deprecated. is. Removed. So uh, Python 2.7. Oh, I'm not like I'm not we promising. Three X in the future. And bye bye. Two two seven is going to be heavily deprecated in Spark three. <laughs> um, like you can probably still run it, but I'm not going to fucking test it. Yeah. So it is on you. Yeah. Um, and like is three is going to be. I mean, I, that's, that's. I think you can safely get away with that now. The only thing still using any Python 2x stuff is probably stuff that was written like five years ago. Also, my employer. Oh, we can't talk about that. Right. Yeah, yeah, no. And the microphone definitely wouldn't have picked that up, so we're good. No, not at yeah, all. No, yeah, real so, subtle. Real yeah, subtle. That, uh, okay. Well, yeah, you're right. No, no, it's great. So, go, like, go Python 2. <laughs> um, now is a great time to get started on your Python 2 to 3 migrations if you haven't already. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's one of the things. Uh, we're probably going to get to finally kick out Spark ML Lib, which is our old legacy machine learning library. Um, oh, so that's really exciting. Pour one out. Some, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I like, used to use that. No, I trained a lot of I trained a lot of linear regression models with that. In yeah. fact, I'm actually training one right now um, on ML Lib. Well, yeah. Um, there's a long story for why it's on ML Lib rather than Spark ML, but uh, we haven't reached the Bud Light Lime portion of the conference, so we'll, we'll save that one for another yeah. day. Another day, another camera roll. It'll be fine. We'll yeah. always hear. Yeah. Oh my God. There's anyways. We whatever. could just do a whole section on that. How about we do that someday? Uh, so, like dry commits. Oh, <laughs> no, that's just my live stream. Oh, that's just your live stream. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I'm only, 
I do it at nine o'clock in the morning, so I'm sober at least half the time. Yes, um, all about coffee. No, that's great. No one knows it's in your coffee cup on a live stream. Not at all. Nope. All right, so we got, uh, we're getting rid of some Python-ish stuff, maybe, yeah. kind of, sort of, non-committal, but yes. Um, but then uh, big features that are gonna, are there new things yeah, coming so, with Spark? Um, so I'm not working on the streaming part personally, but I think we're gonna see some really big stuff happen in Spark streaming. It's really right, exciting. Yeah. Uh, we're taking another crack at the data source APIs because, uh, I don't know, did you use the data source V2 APIs a lot yourself, personally? I have. Okay, so there's been a lot of complaints with them. Um, and I use Perl, so I don't feel like I can judge anymore. Oh man, you and I should have a DBI. Perl. DBI. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna rewrite our, our data connection layer again. Um, so that's really exciting because there's there were some serious issues there. So if you're a database vendor, this is once again another exciting time for you to provide all a your connector. new connector. Um, <laughs> but I think it's it's gonna be a relatively smooth upgrade path. It's looking like that. Uh, it's some, some new functionality that people have been really asking so they can provide a better experience uh, to Spark and sort of give it the information it needs. Um, the other thing that I'm excited about, and can't promise for sure, is the Kubernetes integration is becoming oh. much less of a hard, um, what's that expression? Dumpster fire? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're, we're starting to put out the dumpster fire, uh, and it's really exciting. Is that um, a Kubernetes operator? Oh, no, there's three of those. Oh, yeah. From different we have people. many to pick from. Which yeah. one? Which one would you like? Uh, I'd like the one that works. So, yeah, about, about that. that. <laughs> um, so my solution has been to add a fourth. It doesn't work either. But uh, it'll be really I feel like soon. we talked about this last time, and that was still the answer. No. But it, I think this is kind of where Kubernetes is right now, anyway. It's, it's kind of a wild west. There's a lot of uh, exuberance yeah. of making it to work, and then, you know, you get a, lot of, there. get a lot of choices. Yeah. And then eventually it'll just kind of go. But so the exciting things that I'm seeing happen for, for Spark with Kubernetes are. Uh, there is a proof of concept shuffle service for it already, um, and that's really important because it's going to let us bring in dynamic scale up uh, and scale down. Uh, scale down is the hard one. Yeah, that one's that one's the one that sucks. I can always add more resources. Right. Although I did have to make a quota request for six terabytes of SSDs. Uh, <laughs> Let's get it back. You scale it down. Oh yeah, no, 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 no one scale scales down. down right? No, no, no. Okay, so um, well, it'll start to support better scale down. And another one that I'm I'm working on personally is because um, Kubernetes actually does a a better job, um, in my opinion. Um, this is like a personal preference sort of thing than Yarn of communicating uh, essentially pod migration or container migration, more or less. And so I think we can start doing some more intelligent things around sort of container migration. Right. So that's really important for people who are doing dynamic scale up and scale down on their underlying Kubernetes cluster, not just the Spark nodes on the cluster. Because uh, you want to be able to shut down entire executors. I can see how that would be uh, really useful, especially in a cloud environment. Yeah, I mean, I happen to work at a cloud provider. What a shock that this is what I work on. Uh, yeah, but this is like everybody's using cloud, right? Yeah, no, thank God. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Let's, we're all jumping in the pool now. Uh, but this scale up, scale down is like, that's a cloudy notion because when I'm paying by the hour or by the minute. Yeah, it makes I, a difference. I don't want to run all day. Yeah, especially doing nothing. Yeah. Spinning infrastructure, doing nothing. You know, the number one thing, I found this out. Fun tangent. Number one concern across all levels of use, cloud usage, yeah. cost control. I mean, I don't that pay means for my cloud costs. From ops people to developers to C level, everyone has the same concern: cost control. Yeah. So if you didn't work at a cloud company, you might yeah. be worried about that. Yeah. I mean, I am worried that my boss will find out how much I spend. But like, as far as I know, he apparently watch everyone these. is worried about how much their boss will yeah. find out. Like you're just burning infrastructure at some point. I mean, I yeah. mean that makes sense, right? Like, because. At some point, someone might come and be like, wait, which one's more expensive? You or the machine? Right. Um, and if the answer is the machine. You're doomed. Uh, yeah. 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 All right, is there anything else that we need to talk about on that? Uh, three. Spark 3. Um, Two streaming four. engine. All right. Uh, machine learning changes. Oh, actually, yeah. So 
One more thing. But wait, yeah, this one more is thing. like the, the Steve Jobs. Yeah, one but way thing. shittier. <laughs> yeah, probably not as good, yeah. No, ah, uh, deep learning. <gasps> oh, is this how Facebook knows everything about me? Probably, yeah. So I can do this at home now. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, deep learning is, um, that's the creepiest part of AI, I think, right now. So I'm going to refrain from comment uh, based on the suggestions that I received from our value partners in the PR group. Um, <laughs> but let's focus on the technology changes. Let's hand. focus on the technology. Yeah. So deep learning is going to be a part of Spark. Uh, sort of is the answer. It's, it's, so it's happening in a very interesting way compared to the other components in Spark, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> Specifically, it's happening in a, in a much more hybrid way. Uh, so what we're seeing is the, the support required for the pipeline to like right. build a deep learning pipeline is going in Spark for the most part, but the components to actually do the deep learning are living out in separate repos. So it's like a, almost like a pluggable storage layer yeah. thing, where it's like, yeah, we acknowledge that this exists, but bring your own implementation. It looks a lot more like the data source connectors than our machine learning library, right? It's like I think that these makes are a the lot APIs of sense. that you should build to, or these. And like to be fair, because it's a new thing, like they're building yeah. a lot of the bridges themselves. Right. Um, but it's it's really nice because it means that uh, I don't have to understand deep learning code, because if that was in core Spark, I would have to learn. A lot, a lot more. more. And yeah. that's just not happening. And it's a really it's a really nice boundary that I can pretend that I won't have to learn the other side of it until at least six months after Spark 3 ships. Yeah, I don't I I don't want to learn it all either, but I think it's interesting that there is this potential abstraction layer. We're abstracting abstract thinking. Yeah, it's great. What could go wrong? Oh meta. <laughs> Uh, I guess we'll find out real soon, huh? Yeah. I, <laughs> Spark 3 is going to take some time. I would not worry about I this I have a feeling so. next year at Day to Day, that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So next year at Day to Day, we'll talk about why Spark 3 is late. <laughs> Should we just do it now? Uh, okay, no, so my generic it. excuses are uh, <laughs> we really value the contributions coming from the community, but at this time, we don't have enough reviewers. Code reviews, yeah. Uh, yeah code code reviews. Back, to, back to basics, yeah. Um, we're really excited about the latest release candidate. However, there seems to be some different groups within the community who have different opinions about if we're ready. Viva open Viva source. Open source. Yep. Um, the other one, uh, we decided at the last minute that we're going to add a shared memory bridge. Um, but it turns out that it keeps giving us um, native code exceptions, and no one here remembers how to debug those anymore. You can't, uh, all right, so hold on. Native code on, on Java, that's a classically hard, impossible problem in debugging. Yeah, what could go wrong? Uh, because they're not connected. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Through the magic of Apache Arrow, shared memory buffers, <laughs> LLVM, Python, and Fortran, you too can train a deep learning model. I'm gonna quote Dwee High here. There is no magic. There is magic. You just don't want to know what it is. I don't want to know what it is. Yeah. Okay, so you're ending this, this Spark 3 magic. Yeah, Spark 3 is going to be magic, and definitely by a support contract magic. or whatever it is, my boss sells. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Got in that shameless plug. That is quite an overview. I think that's everything promised. We're going to see what happens. Well, let's, 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 let's dial back on that word promised. No, not only like everything discussed. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what lands. All yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. okay. Cool, cool. Perfect. Bam. All right, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us again for the Distributed Data Show. We love your feedback, so go to the Distributed Data Show page on Datastax Academy and tell us what you think. You can also find us on the Datastax Academy YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get great podcasts. While you're there, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.